Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Answer to Riddle, Analysis and Design of Diodes RC Snubbers. In a previous video, I have posted the riddle, which is related to a circuit like this, as an example. We have here a boost converter. This is the switcher, inductor, diode, and here is the output section. We have a driver, and I'm showing here the stray inductance in the driver loop here, and then there is a stray inductance in the diode loop here, okay? Now we know that a stray inductance in the gate loop is harmful because it can cause oscillation. Also, it will delay the onset of the actual current uh, to the gate. So we need to minimize. But here we have just a stray inductance and this is a continuous current going one way or another way during turn off. The situation is different with this strain inductance of the diode. And here I'm showing an on state, in the, which case the diode is not conducting. I'm just taking it off just to emphasize it's like an open circuit here. And then when we have the turn off situation, by the way, when I'm saying turn on and turn off, I'm referring to the transistor, okay? So the transistor was on and now it is turned off. We have this current of the inductor rushing into the output section here, output through the diode, and there is a current interruption here. There's a step in the current, and consequently, we're going to have some disturbances, voltage spikes, which are really not desirable because they're causing losses, and also there is a problem of EMI and, of course, danger to the diode, okay? It can actually break down the diode. And then when the transistor is turned on, we will have a reverse recovery current for a silicon diode. And then this current stops. And again, we have an interruption of the current causing another voltage here, which again could be harmful to the diode. So, the question of this riddle was, how can the disturbances due to the current steps in LD be reduced? And if so, how is the remedy working? That is, if there is some way to overcoming, what is it really doing? So let me go back to the turn on, which is the worst of the cases. Here, we have the transistor turned on. We have the reverse recovery stops, we have a interruption of the current, we have a negative going voltage here, and the voltage across the diode will go up and it can reach dangerous values across the diode. This capacitor represents the diode in the off state. So we are going to have here a high voltage across the diode in the reverse direction, which can be of course harmful, and in fact I have seen cases in which this diode actually exploded. So during the turn off situation, the transistor has been on and now it's off. Current now is rushing into here. This situation is less problematic because we do have here a capacitance. So the current has a path to go through it. It's a fairly larger capacitor than the diode capacitance. So we, we are going to have some resonant here between this capacitance and this uh, inductance. So we are expecting to see something like this. Of course, this uh, capacitance here is also involved. And we're going to see here some spike here. If it is too high, then you do have to have a clamp here, which I'm not discussing in this uh, presentation. There are some other videos that are talking about snubbers and clamps for PWM converters. So going back to the question, it is clear that, that the most important thing is, first of all, to reduce LD as much as possible. That is to reduce the inductance of this loop. This goes without saying. You can do it uh, depending on how many layers you have, either by making this line close or uh, if you have a ground plane, this is also a way to reduce inductances. So let's assume that we did all that we can and LD is really small, it's not zero, but there is some LD. So what we have to do is to provide some path, 
some bypass to the current of the reverse recovery when it is interrupted or when it stops. And the way to do it is to add an RC snubber that looks like that. So this is the way to overcome the disturbance when the reverse recovery current stops. So the question is, of course, what is the size of RS, what is the size of CS, and how really does it work? And this is what I'm going now to discuss in the rest of this presentation. So let's first of all talk about the turn off, that is the transistor is turned off, we have the current of the inductor rushing into here. As we have said, we have very capacitance, so the current will go up a little bit. The current will flow first through here, and then eventually the diode voltage will become close to zero, in fact, uh, more positive here, and then the diode will start to conduct. So this is, as I have said, the less of the two problems, and I'm not going to discuss it that much. We'll go back to it a little bit later. However, if you do have a snubber, then there is an issue here that you have to take into account, and that is the following. Once the diode starts to conduct, then this capacitor, the snubber capacitor, will discharge. It was charged to V out, and now as the diode starts to conduct, we have a discharge part. It looks like a reverse current through the diode, but really it's not because the main current is going through here from the main inductor, and then there is an additional current here during this discharge. So we have to take into account that we need time for this discharge. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. We do have, however, another issue we have to take into account, and that is that while this discharge is going on, the energy of the capacitor is actually being dissipated by this resistor. It's a discharge of a capacitor. So the energy is C as V squared over 2, and the power dissipated in this capacitor is this power. So this is something we have to take into account, aside from the fact that the time constant has to be such that there will be sufficient time for the discharge. So let's go back to the turn-on situation. The transistor is turned on, we have the reverse recovery through the diode, and then it stops, and then the current is passing here through the snubber. During this time, the snubber will be charged. Before the turn-on, the diode was conducting, so the voltage on the capacitor was zero. But now, since the transistor is shorting to ground, we have a charging of this capacitor, and actually there are two processes going on. Number one is that the V-out is charging the capacitor, and then we have this extra current stored here, which is also being transferred to this capacitor. So we can look at it at superposition. We have one case of V-out, and then assume here zero, then we have another resonant circuit here in which the energy stored here is passed to the capacitor. And here it is, this is the energy of the inductor going into the capacitor, this should be squared. And this voltage is the extra, the delta V, due to this energy. That is, the capacitor is charged both by V out and also by this energy, and this delta V can be calculated here as IP, this is the peak reverse current, times the characteristic impedance of this resonant circuit. So here it is, this is the equating the energy, and once I decide about the delta V that I allow, knowing that the total voltage will be V out plus this delta V, I can calculate what is C sub S, this is the snubber capacitor. Of course, for that, I have to know what is LD. And this is an issue that I'll talk about a little bit later. Usually, we don't have a firm number for this, and there is an estimate, and then we can use some trial and error, I'll talk about it later. So let's take an example. Suppose the reverse recovery current is 20 amp, Let's assume that the inductance is 10 nanohenry, output 400 volt, 
And let's assume that I allow a extra 150 volt across the diode. That is, I'm going to have something like uh, 550 volt across the diode. So, knowing the estimate value for LD, I can calculate the capacitance, and it comes to be 170 picofarad. Now, what about the resistance? The resistance has to be there because if there is no resistance, or if the resistance is very low, very low, then the Q of the circuit, the quality factor, will be high because the quality factor is the characteristic impedance over RS, and I'm going to have oscillations here, which is no good. Okay, so I have to choose RS so that I'll have a quality factor below 1 or 0.5 or even a little bit lower than that. What about a large RS? Well, if the RS, if the resistance is large, then we have the problem of the discharge of the capacitor. So we have to make sure that the time constant is shorter than the T off time expected in the circuit. Otherwise, the circuit will not discharge. Now, what about a very large resistor? Well, this is no good also because if you have a very large resistor, then you have the current rushing in here, and this will cause a high voltage here, and this might cause a breakdown of the diode. So, so the choice of the RS will be based on the quality factor. We want the quality factor to be below, say, 0.5. So knowing the estimate for LD already CISOB is chosen, we can calculate the resistance of the snubber. So to test this thing and just to demonstrate it, as a matter of fact, I've set up two circuits here. One is sort of mimicking the turn on and one that is the turn off. Here I have the stray inductance. Now I'm not relying on the reverse recovery of the diode on the model, the SPICE model of the diode, because I found that these models are not very good. So instead, I am assuming that the voltage here is zero, the diode is not conducting, and the initial condition is that there is a current 20 amp through the inductor. So it's like starting the simulation when the reverse recovery current stops. And then of course the current will be flowing this way. And then for the turn off, I have this uh, large inductor just to have a current source, 20 amp, rushing into here. And again, the initial condition is that the voltage here is zero and the current here is zero. This is like before the turn off instant. And here is an example. In this case, I've chosen CISABES small, smaller than I've calculated. I've calculated 170 and this is 50. RS is about 10. Turn off is pretty good, but the turn on is bad. This is when we have the reverse recovery. The voltage across the diode is just too high and the model, the SPICE model here, SPICE model of this, is uh, actually including a breakdown at 600 volts, it says 600 volt diode. So we have here like a breakdown, like a zener of the diode. This is certainly not good. If I choose 170 and RS10, uh, the situation looks pretty good. We have the 150 volt overshoot, which is as we expect or as we require. Turn off looks pretty good. So this is a nice picture here. If I increase the capacitor to 500 picofarad, then obviously the overshoot is smaller for the reason that we have said, because the capacitor is larger, so it can absorb the energy at a lower voltage. But the turn off will be longer, okay, longer here, the discharge. And then if I choose the resistor to be very high, then I got this uh, again over voltage here, which is no good. So what are the conclusions here? We see that a diode RC snubber can really help alleviate problem due to the stray inductance in the diode switching loop. The RC snubber needs to be tuned carefully. Since LD is unknown, experimental trial and error may be required, and 
During these experiments, uh, you can monitor the voltage across the diode itself by a differential probe. And then, one has to take into account that the reverse recovery of a diode, of a silicon diode, is highly temperature dependent, and at high temperature, it is becoming larger. So one has to take this into account when designing the RC snubber. So this brings it to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope you have found it of interest, and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.